In this video, I am going to show you how to use the PMT function. To show you how to use this function, I will be walking you through the steps to use this to calculate the monthly and yearly payments on a mortgage loan. So we will be using this function to calculate mortgage payments. To use the function, you are going to need a few things. You're gonna need the interest rate, the number of payments that need to be made, and the amount of the loan. Before I go over using it to calculate mortgage payments, let's go over the basics of the syntax of this function. So PMT is used to calculate the payments on an annuity investment. So you can use it on loans, mortgage loans, and other investments. Um, this is the syntax here. The first argument is rate, which is the interest rate. The second argument is the number of periods, which is essentially the number of payments that will be made on the loan. And then the third argument is present value, which is the current value of the annuity, or in other words, the value of the loan if you're looking at mortgage loans. Future value is an optional argument it is uh, the future value remaining after the final payment and then end or beginning this is another optional argument what this will do is it will specify whether payments are due at the end or the beginning of each period so zero is end and then one is the beginning um, so this kind of seems more complicated than it really is once we go through the example you'll see how this is actually a really simple function to use um, one important thing to note though is that you need to make sure that your rate and your number of periods are consistent so what i mean by that is if we're calculating a mortgage rate paid monthly you're going to have to divide the rate by 12 because if it's a yearly rate we divide it by 12 for each month and then the number of periods is going to be the years multiplied by 12. So you have to make sure these are consistent. If you're doing something like a loan paid quarterly or something, the rate would be divided by 4 for each quarter. And then the number of periods would be the years multiplied by 4. So you just have to make sure whatever kind of payment schedule you're doing, um, the rate and number of periods are consistent. So you'll see this in more detail as I go through this mortgage example. So using this function to calculate the mortgage payments. So I'm going to use it to calculate the yearly payment and the monthly payment. So in the cell where I want the payment to calculate, I'm gonna type equals, and then I'm gonna do the minus symbol and PMT. The reason I'm doing minus first is because PMT calculates as a negative so I just want the ending result to be positive you don't really have to do this um, it's an optional step I just like to do it so PMT and I'm gonna press tab so the first argument in this function is the rate so that is the interest rate and since I'm dealing with an annual interest rate I'm gonna divide it by 12 for the 12 months in the year comma the next argument in my function is the number of periods so this mortgage length is 30 years and there's 12 months in a year so you can see this is what i was talking about earlier ensuring the rate and the number of periods are consistent so the next argument that i'm going to do present value basically the value of the loan these optional arguments, I'm not going to do them because I don't need them for this calculation. So that is pretty much it for the PMT formula. Now what I'm going to do is since in this cell, I want to calculate the yearly payment. I'm just going to multiply this by 12 and that is going to return the yearly payment for this mortgage loan. And then if I want to calculate just the monthly payment, I can just remove that part or I wouldn't need to enter it in the first place if you're only doing the monthly calculation. And that is the monthly payment on this mortgage. So again, this function is actually really easy to do. 
the key step here is again ensuring the rate and the number of periods are consistent. So I have the rate divided by 12, number of periods multiplied by 12, because this is in years, and then the amount of the loan. So really, if you're just doing mortgages, you just need three arguments here in your function, and it's very simple to do. So this is pretty useful if you're not used to financial functions in Google Sheets. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching the video. If you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions or content suggestions, just let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to answer everyone.